Hello, I'm Victoria, Event Marketing Team Lead at Oxylabs. To take advantage of web data extraction opportunities and gain a competitive advantage in today's market, you need to start thinking at scale. That's why today we'll discuss how to extract public web data at scale. Stay until the end of this video to learn about the best web data gathering practices, solutions, as well as common problems. From e-commerce to finance, data gathering can be beneficial for various sectors. It helps to simplify and streamline daily tasks, as well as make vital business decisions. More specifically, public web data extraction use cases include market research, dynamic pricing, SEO monitoring, ad verification, cybersecurity, brand protection, and many more. However, like with any business operation, public web data gathering has challenges that even the best of us can meet. Such things as not automated processes, ineffective storage solutions, and haphazard workflows can stop you in your tracks and make your data extraction operations unscalable. So having a solid foundation is crucial when scaling up. The exact look and feel of this foundation can differ from company to company, but there are a few universal elements. So when we talk about effective and scalable data extraction, we are referring to an automated process that relies on a robust pipeline with three main components. These are scraping, storage, and processing. Let's take a look at these three elements in more detail and how they can help you gather data at scale. The first element is web scraping, and it's an automated process designed to obtain huge amounts of data from websites. For example, imagine you wanted to know how much similar products to yours cost online. You could utilize a scraper to collect pricing information from e-commerce websites, which you could then use to adjust your pricing strategy. Web scraping is done with the help of programming languages such as c -sharp, Ruby, Java, R, and many others. However, in many cases, Python and JavaScript take the crown as the most popular ones. You can also build a web scraper from scratch, but it can be quite tedious as you need a lot of technical know-how. That's why many businesses prefer to employ external solutions suited to their unique uh, use cases. For example, Oxylabs offers web scraping solutions that can be applied to numerous business scenarios. Our SERP Scraper API collects real-time uh, search data and is perfect for SEO analytics. In contrast, e-commerce Scraper API is designed to extract product data and can give you the information you need for pricing intelligence or competitor analysis. The Web Scraper API is yet another scalable public web data gathering solution. It's a general-purpose tool suitable for most websites and serves as a multitude of use cases, such as fraud protection and market research. The APIs automate a bulk of underlying processes, making data extraction less difficult. Companies like Oxylabs are the perfect choice for businesses that want to save time and money. They help you focus on data analysis and strategy development rather than data delivery. It's also super important to highlight the role of proxies in web scraping. A proxy is a server that mediates the connection between you and a web server. Think of it as the middleman exchanging web requests with web servers on your behalf. While this seems simple enough, you might ask, what do proxies have to do with web scraping? In short, proxies will help you overcome certain challenges, such as IP blocks and geo restrictions that websites impose when you try to scrape data from them. That's especially crucial when extracting data at scale, as you'll need to send web requests in thousands. This means that web servers will quickly realize you're not just a regular visitor. With the help of proxies, you can divide these numbers of requests and avoid IP blocks. Also, different types of proxy servers handle some tasks better than others. If you want to hear more about how, how to use proxies to gather public web data, hang on until the end of the video, as we will come back to this later. Let's move on to the next element of our data pipeline, storage. When you scrape public web data at scale, you usually end up with terabytes of data. 
So thoroughly considering appropriate storage solution is a must, as it will help mitigate costs and data loss risks. Establishing a combination of short-term and long-term storage solutions is a good approach. The former will act as your buffer and store data straight from the scraper, while the latter will be used for pooling and already processed data. This also brings us to our next element in your data pipeline, which is data processing. Before you start processing data, you need to parse it. Data parsing is the process of analyzing information and determining its structure. When scraping, you will likely get your data in a raw HTML. A parser will then take that HTML, analyze it according to pre-written rules, extract relevant information, and convert it into a readable format such as JSON, CSV, or a table. After this, the data can be used for such things as insight extraction, data crunching, and more. Just like with Web Scraper, you can build or buy a parser. However, in some cases, like with our uh, we like with our API scrapers, providers will take care of this step by having a parser built in. Now it is time to take a look at a real web scraping example in action. Normally, you start by installing the programming language of your choice. For this tutorial, we use Python. Then, the programming language needs a coding environment, which can be anything from a text editor to an IDE. When the programming language is set up in the IDE, we need to install and import all the libraries necessary for web scraping. We use Beautiful Soup version 4, Pandas, and Selenium. Once everything is set up, it is time to get coding. You start by specifying the website you want to scrape, which in this case was Oxylab's blog, then you define objects and lists. Uh, this will help the web scraper to determine which data to gather and how to order it. For this video, we instructed the scraper to collect all the blog post names from Oxlab's blog. As mentioned before, you also need to include a parser for your scraping job. Otherwise, you'll get results in a raw HTML format, which isn't very usable for data analysis. With this in mind, you can see that the results of the scraping job have been exported as CSV file that you can open in Excel. There are different columns for distinct types of data extracted, such as blog post names or dates. This will be much more convenient for data analysis than the HTML file. Of course, you'd have way more data in web scraping project done at scale. This is just to illustrate how web scraping and parsing works. For a more in-depth look at this web scraping example, click the info card here. But in the meantime, let's talk about proxies. Now, the example above is quite simple. Obviously, when extracting data at scale, you'd scrape more web pages and send a massive amount of web requests. As mentioned before, you would need proxies not to get blocked while you do that. Let's recap on how we might use a proxy for gathering public web data. Web pages take security measures to block malicious bots. While scrapers are considered to be the good bots, they do share similar characteristics with the bad ones. This is especially true when you have to make multiple web requests to one web server. Your scraper might be flagged as an unwanted visitor and receive an IP ban. So in this situation, you want to divide the requests between a number of proxies to overcome these restrictions. Moreover, there are different types of proxies that can be applied depending on the nature of your scraping task. For example, for tasks that require overcoming geo restrictions, you might want to use residential proxies. They're tied to physical locations and are seen as real users. Websites that provide travel fair information often employ residential proxies to overcome geo restrictions and to collect travel data. However, in some cases, you might need more speed or volume. That's when you would use data center proxies. Unlike residential proxies, they are not tied to residential IPs. Instead, they're created in data centers in bulk, which means that they're more accessible. They're also much faster and cheaper. In addition, proxy types do not stop at data center and residential proxies. If you're interested to learn more, we created a really useful video that goes into more detail about different proxy types and how to use proxies to gather web data. Be sure to check it out. 
If you enjoyed this video on how to extract public web data at scale, be sure to like it and subscribe to our channel for more content on how to gather public web data at scale. Thanks for watching and see you next time.